you know, if people have sort of been following what we've been doing, you know, like we're, we're always trying to be on the forefront of, you know, what are some of the latest um, techniques in learning and how can we improve what we do and get better at it to get, you know, better results for the students and provide a better um, mm. experience for them, better learning experience. So um, some of the areas that we're definitely looking at is um, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, virtual reality type stuff. I think the machine learning is probably um, one of the most important parts because everyone comes in at different levels. So what the machine learning does is it actually, as you answer the questions, it works out your level of um, academic, ability, uh, academic ability and then it provides you different versions of the course that you need to be huh. able to be successful. So, you know, if you're good creatively, then you'll get the creative version of the course. If you're good wow. um, with numbers, you know, you'll get the, the sort of the numbers version. So, you know, we're just looking into that. There's been a lot of tests, you know, largely in America, um, but there's some companies doing some big things in that area. And I think um, because our course is um, um, uh, moderate to hard um, and also it has such a range of people who want to do it, I think, you know, for us to implement that sort of um, stuff is, is going to be the best thing for, for our students as well as just from a company perspective. Um, the other one would be virtual reality. So for people to be able to strap on headsets and, and, mm. and headphones and, and be sub, um, immersed into, you know, virtual reality with, you know, screams and car crashes and emergency situations. There's some um, companies in Australia um, who have got some great technology that does exactly that. Um, and it's just, uh, it's an emerging technology. Um, and I think even the coronavirus, you know, has assisted people to want to accept those sort of technologies. Yeah, we've got to get creative now, yeah. don't we? And then even through the assessments, you know, that or that's an even better way to assess people because it's, um, it's as close to real life as you can get. You know, some people... You know, they have those headsets on for five minutes and there's a screaming person in their ear and when they take them off, they're, you know, they're, they're spent because they've been immersed in it, you know. Like, wow. Or the, the, the car horns honking, there's people screaming, it's, it's full on. So hopefully we can just implement some of those things into the trainings slowly and so we don't scare people off. But mm. yeah. How exciting is that? I mean, like, there's a lot of industries that I, I guess for quite some time it seems to be normal that that happens, whether you, like, you want to be a pilot, there's mm. simulations and they have to do, you know, X amount of hours of simulation training. I think this is it's exciting to hear that you, you're really kind of moving forward and bringing those kinds of technologies um, into into play because, yeah, like, yeah, I couldn't imagine having a VR headset on and listening to <laughs> screaming yeah. children. But I guess that's that's the reality, right? When you're at a scene, you can't you can't kind of choose no. to have classical music playing and. No, and everything to be, <laughs> be kind peaceful, of, yeah, and go you know, the way you want it easy, and good, yeah. and, and you know, got really a deal. Hard. It's also really hard to to reenact in a in a scenario, you know, at the practical. So mm. we try our best to try and throw people off in a practical, but you know, you, you can't honk a horn and have people screaming the whole time, or have a car crash, or have someone with you know massive hemorrhaging. You can try right. as much as you can, but you know, oh. virtual reality, you can see it and, and hear it. I'm sure, like, if you needed someone with with uh, some serious kind of cognitive impairment to come along i'm sure one of us could oh, come along I'm and sure. you know yeah. put our hands up or you know you know absolutely but you Throw don't want that on. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that uh and and i guess it's another level of bringing the learning to people particularly the practical because you know that at this point in time has to be sort of face to face but yeah. um if you can kind of uh you know um decrease that gap uh, yeah. for people to be able to get get hands on without being hands-on in a sense. Mm. Yeah, for sure. And um, one of the other initiatives, even with um, the coronavirus, so, you know, people during our course have to get their clinical hours up. So they need to attend events. They need to attend all these things that are reduced at the moment. So um, we've been talking with our, our regulator as well as some providers to be able to create mock events. So hmm. you could imagine at a, at a dance party where they have a lot of problems with, you know, drug overdoses and mm. um, sprained legs and, you know, people with alcoholic, um, alcohol-related uh, illnesses, yeah. injuries. Um, mm. Just um, basically recreating those in a in a warehouse, you know, mm. and um, you know the music, the um, the smoke machine, the, the crazy friends. So then, when our students are able to come in, yes, it's a controlled environment, but they're also getting all these different scenarios played out, you know, over one sort of session. So largely they're probably going to see and deal with more than they would in a normal event um they don't have to wait for the events to start up again so yeah we're, we're really close to being able to sign off on that to be able to provide that as an experience for our students and it's going to give them an even better um practical experience and they get in their yeah. normal clinical placement where you know if it's a quiet event they might not sort of see any action so. yeah.